So good night everybody. This is the Zelda 2 randomizer max random tournament. Tonight we have the Alan Hefley versus Raikou Rider. And we have on the booth Mr. Roll City saying good night, Mr. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. Uh I'm excited for a good match. This will be the final match of uh the round two of the Swiss phase. So uh should be a good one. Yeah, we have some spoil spoilers, as you can see in the tracker. Um, we have the fairy and the thunder spell. We have the wrath, the boots, the magic key, and we have five gems to place. Also, the players will start with two heart containers. Yeah, the two heart containers will be some limited survivability early, and uh, hopefully for them they'll find some more because with five gems, it will be a bit of a longer haul okay so we're checking if the guys are ready to start and we'll start at any moment Okay, so we're underway, and what do we have going on? The players have taken a good look at their inventory, uh, their starting stash. Yeah, have you seen a, a <laughs> such a close area? Well, they have the boots, but <laughs> it, it is pretty interesting, this map, this map layout. We have Raikou Rider finding the magic container cave. Or I'm sorry, this is trophy cave that he's in. My apologies. And oh, that'll put the runners right at ease within the first uh, 90 seconds. Uh, he has the glove. So that will eliminate a lot of guesswork later on in the game. Um. Of course, you want that glove for GP, but once in a while, in something like Max Rando, that glove is not required. So with glove and boots and raft... And Fairy and Thunder, they're already in very, very good shape. Uh, with less than six gems, you don't necessarily have to do Palace 4. So, really, everyone can consider themselves in go mode, really. I mean, well, Raikou, anyway. And the Allen Hefley will not be far behind. Victor, are you there? 
Yes, I am. I'm fixing a, a bit of the cropping and I'm okay. fixing the audio issues. But yeah, we're we're okay. Oh, okay, thank you. I I didn't uh, know if we were having more technical difficulties beyond that. Let's see. Uh, Alan Heffley taking the very smart play of ferrying across a dark medicine cave uh, <laughs> with two heart containers. That's of course a uh, very smart play. And meanwhile, Raikou in the magic container cave well, and finding another heart container, which is a, probably the best case scenario at this point. Uh, heart containers and magic containers will be their best friend, considering uh, how many important starting items they already have. Even the spells won't be a factor. So with the five gems, this could still be a little bit of a lengthy game, but they are basically in go mode uh, right now. I believe Alan Heffley still has to locate the glove out of that uh, trophy cave, but it, it will only be a matter of a couple of minutes. Nonetheless, uh, Raikou's still uh, looking for spells as he picks up the Saria mirror. Yeah, the things that could stop it at this moment could be needing the reflect and the flute. But there's a very low probability of those things being needed in the same seat. We'll see what yes, that, happen. That's an excellent point about the flute, if especially if GP is uh, flute blocked, then you would of course need the flute. Or if any palace other than Palace 4 was flute blocked, then you would need either the flute or reflect. So that is a very valid point. Um, right now, it would probably be a good play for the runners to just cover as much overworld ground as they can and take a look at the palaces and uh, just try to start doing the palaces as quickly as they can. Try not to worry about the flute block until you see it's occurred. So we see the Alan Heffley going through Parappa Cave. Uh, I, I, I didn't, I missed if he already got the glove. As he got in the glove. I don't believe so. Um... The only item cave that I've seen for a fact to go through was the uh, medicine cave. The glove is in trophy cave. And we see him now in uh, the western pea bag cave. A lot of nasty enemies in here. You just see the shadows of axes and boomerangs everywhere. And a magic container for his troubles. That's, uh, again... Uh, very good pickup. Um, uh, as about as valuable a thing as he can find at this point. Of course, only to make his way to Trophy Cave. But I think we've only seen the one palace as well in the overworld. I think we saw it on Raikou's side, the um, area north of Start. I believe he took the boots, and we saw a palace north of Start. Yeah, the one that's near the, the North Palace, I believe, was Palace 2 or 5. But I, I don't know if they checked. If they did, I, I missed it. We'll have to find it the uh, next time around. It being so close to the raft spot, I'm sure we'll see it again uh, before long. So we see the Alan Heffley in Medicine Cave. And Death Mountain holds the trophy. Is the hint that Raikou Rider gets. Yeah, he's still wisely taking the hints that come to him. I don't know how far out of, the, out of his way he plans on going for hints, but it's still a good idea. Um, just in case something comes up, like you said, like the flute. Um, and then even if you even if you get a hint that's not about the flute, you'll at least know where not to look for it if something like that comes up. When, when, when you already have boots, uh, glove, and raft, 
you don't need that many hints, but any anything that the game wants to tell you, you want to hear. And it looks like Alan Heffley now is going to start going north of the starting area by way of the water. Yeah, so if this were in uh, a seed where you will start with the boots, the boots will definitely be required. That wraps it, up it's very, this there. Yeah. Very important in Max Rando to take it full advantage of the things that the game starts you with. Like if the game, for example, were to start you with downstab, it's important to know that and to take advantage of it. Um, it, it can really cost you some time if you don't. Uh, so that's one of those minor things that gets overlooked in Max Rando. That, that, that's a difference between that and Standard. Uh, we see here Alan Heffley uh, wasting no time in diving into Palace 2. Uh, I don't believe he has his glove yet. And uh, yep, he runs straight into the glove block room. And decides to bail. Although, you know, it, it won't be long before he uh, <laughs> finds his glove and dives right back in. Yeah, there it, is, there it is, so he's gonna get it in a few moments. Yeah, I would say both runners are doing a fair job of handling the... Uh, low number of heart containers here. Sometimes it can be very, very nasty, but they're both making progress. We see Raikou Rider showing off that nice Samus Sprite, which uh, for those of you who haven't seen what it looks like when Samus does a down stab, uh, I, won't, I won't ruin it for you, um, but it's pretty cool. You'll see. <laughs> yeah. And... The other thing to note is uh, that the, the ways the, the, the guys explore the thing will see a very big difference. I believe the Alan Hemphley just finding the glove close to the star makes him feel like he's behind somehow. So maybe we'll see some recklessness from him, but we don't know. For a moment, I thought he was going straight into Death Mountain, but he quickly thought better of it and uh, is combing the overworld again. So, a magic container for Raikou Rider. He has five, as, as well as the Alan Heffley. And the other thing I was going to say is that sometimes not only the, the number of hard containers that you get, is what decides if survivability is low or not. There are other factors like the number of lives you start with and the damage that, that the enemies deal to you. So I, I still, I'm still not sure how many lives these guys start with. But... I saw on Raikou's screen he has two lives as of right now, but uh, I, I don't know if that's how many he started with. We'll have to... Uh, the next time someone up an A, we'll have to... Uh pay good attention to how many starting lives because like you said that's an even more important factor in their survivability than the number of heart containers you see yeah and chat is informing us that uh, the players probably have app step and uh, that fire is linked to jump so that will deal that will make the players uh, deal with some progress with, with with some ease Like, for example, yeah. the Canadian Hall or some of the rooms in Great Palace. And for anyone in a five-gem seed, I'd say there's a good chance they'll be doing Palace 6. Uh, jump can be very helpful in Palace 6. Uh, like Victor mentioned, the Canadian Hall and also the fight with Barba is, you know, you can, you can really speed it along with the jump spell. Okay, and we see Raikou up in A, and they have the vanilla number of starting lives, which is three.
more pea bags in the uh, items uh, spots. We got a uh, 500 point bag in the grass tile for Alan. But yeah, if I were them, I would be going into palaces at this point. Yeah, definitely. And in fact, they they have more or less everything they need, barring a possible flute, like you mentioned. Um, I'm if I'm one of these runners right now, I'm starting to get a little concerned about where are these palaces. The only thing they've seen is Palace Two. Um, it, it's making me nervous uh, uh, 13 plus minutes into a seed uh, knowing that we have everything and not knowing where the palaces are. I'm, I, I'm then fearful that the other guy has located the palaces and is going to town a little faster than I am. So uh, I bet both runners are feeling a sense of trepidation about uh, where are these palaces. Yeah, definitely. And in terms of levels, the, the city is throwing them some money. So the players are 334 and 333, which at this point is a very good position to be. Oh, absolutely. Speaking of leveling too, we saw the Alan Hefley in P2 grinding one of the drippers briefly. Uh um, the, the drippers were producing 150-point uh, uh, red iron knuckles, which uh, at this early in a seed could be worth spending a minute on and uh, taking an additional attack level or what have you. It looked like he took the opportunity to grind up one more life level for himself without spending too much time there, so uh, I would call that a good veteran play. Meanwhile, Raikou Rider getting his downstab technique. Maybe that was what was holding him off going into palaces. Maybe he didn't feel so certain about going to palaces without the downstab technique. It could be. And look at him now showing off what downstab looks like with Samus. It's a thing of beauty. Everyone's favorite, the Morph Ball. I'm waiting with bated breath to see if the Alan Hefley runs into the, uh, the room that validates the run, the uh, so-called fake boss room. And this could be, yeah, and he does. <laughs> Of course, you cannot have a run without that room. Yeah, that is fundamental for this game. You cannot skip that room. Especially yeah, I... if you're in a hurry. And especially if you're a Royal City Sane. Th that's right, that room seems to have a special whatever... A, a special magnetism to me. Um... Palace 2 is definitely not the largest palace by any means, but it, it, it in, in my opinion, is one of the most annoying. It, it, just, it just feels like all paths lead to all dead ends first. Uh, you can get luckier in Palace 5 than you do in Palace 2, it seems, at least to me. It is terrible. I mean, Link here of Twitch is now doing some runs in which he's uh, looking to beat the game without getting hit. And at this moment, he's like 20 hits total in all the game. And from those 20 hits, his PB has 5 hits in Palace 2. It is a terrible palace in every sense. Wow, that is a good fun fact. Um, that's got to be a challenge uh, to, to complete a game like Vanilla Zelda 2, not taking any hits.
Okay, so we have Raikou Rider in the item room of whichever palace he's been. I've been too busy worried about Alan Hefley's palace, too. I I have neglected which palace Raikou Rider is in. If I had to guess, I'm guessing Palace 1. Yeah, that is Palace 1. Okay. Um, and it was, of course, a pea bag, and by the looks of it, not a terribly good pea bag. But if you're going to invest a little bit of time and get stuff like that, I mean, I guess at least Palace 1 uh, produces a quick, easy item to get to. I see we we have uh, charter members of my fan club in chat. Uh, I will be signing autographs later. I love you too. And we have Alan Hefley taking on Helmet Head. And Zelda looking delightful in her pink dress today. And Hefley handles Helmet Head no issues. And will be the first to place the gem and take a level, unless he decides to jump the gem. Uh, <laughs> which he wisely does not. Last night we happened to see one of the most mysterious plays in uh, Z2R tournament history as one of the runners uh, at 122 jumped the gem, even though that would have been their first gem. Yeah, and especially on Palace 2, and it was a very long Palace 2, where the item was at the other side of the palace. Yeah. It was a weird move, but well, it, it was entertaining. Oh, it was hysterical, and I just, for whatever it's worth, that runner, despite the hysterical play, still won the race, so... Uh, yeah, I don't know who the joke is. I don't know what's worse, to be the runner that did that or to be the runner that lost to the runner that did that. Uh, but I digress. <laughs> I'm, I'm reliving my own nostalgia here. Um, and now quickly, uh, Hefley jumps into Palace 1, and so now uh, both runners in Palace 1. Yeah, the Alan Hefley defeated the boss on Palace 2, so he's one gem ahead. Let's see how fast he deals with his Palace 1, in which Raikou Rider is at the boss at this moment. Even practically being in go mode, uh, it's very possible that Hefley decides to look for the item here. Um, just because, just whether he's looking for the flute or a, a, a creature comfort heart container or something like this. Um, it can be scarier to leave the item in one behind than it is to invest the time to get it. So Boss Thunder asks, what is go mode? So I'll answer, in Max Rando, go mode is leaving North Palace. For go mode, you need the uh, red ring, silver arrow, and ladder. <laughs> so now is is Raikou's next play going to be Palace 2 I wonder that would seem to be a logical play he's heading in that direction and decides to up an A before arriving at P2. Again, Hefley with a sliver of life dispatches Horsehead. But he is now on to gem number two at the 20 minute mark. Keeping a tidy little pace here. Um, now it's going to be up to him to decide whether to look for that third palace or if he'd rather just go to the raft spot and set sail and start exploring uh, more of the overworld. So in this situation, what will Rose City Saint do? Uh, what I would personally do um, is look for that third palace uh, in the Western continent. I, I want to know what it is. I could move on to the... Uh, to the east, but that makes me uneasy. 
and will we see Alan Heffley disagreeing with me here and uh, deciding to just set sail? Yeah, well, the thing is, you have to complete only five palaces here. So that's true. Yes. I don't want. I, I wouldn't want to spend too much time looking around for things. And yeah, this is a heavily boot required seed. Thankfully, the guys started with it. This eastern continent completely boot blocked. Yep, the boot's absolutely essential here as uh, Hefley makes his way down the coast. And we see the east is absolutely overrun with swamp and grave. So we have Raikou Rider validating the seed at this moment. Yeah, absolutely. There's no way around it. Death taxes and that room there. And the Alan Heffley on Palace 3 or Palace 6. Still don't know. That looks like Palace 3 maybe, I don't know. I would guess this is Palace 3 just based on that first room. I don't know how far behind I am or how far ahead I am, but uh, Hefley is still in the first room on my stream here. Yeah, that's Palace 3. Yeah. The next room over with, yeah, with the Lava Pit room, uh, you can tell that it's Palace 3 by that key that was sitting there on that one little ledge. Um, if this had been Palace 6, there'd be some flying skull heads and no item on that ledge. So the item room for the Alan Hefley is gonna go for it, because why not? It's a short room, and yeah, no damage going for it. And it is a magic container, which can be useful. Yeah, that would probably be my favorite thing to find at this point. Um... Of course, at two hard containers, I could see hoping for a third. Yeah, and, and I don't know where Raikou Rider got his. Did you? He, yeah, I, it was one of the Western Overworld uh, item locations. I'm, I don't remember exactly which one. Maybe heart, or maybe Magic Container Cave. That might have been it. It was one of those. Definitely not the grass tile. I, I distinctly remember that being a pea bag. And in chat, we were getting told that it was a cave indeed. And there's the boss for the Alan Hefley, so he's doing things pretty quickly tonight. Yeah, despite being the second man to the glove, um,. He is doing a good job of staying on task, getting in palaces, and getting to the boss. The temptation can be there, even in Max Rando, to take one or two too many items and uh, let time slip through your fingers that way, but uh, uh, he's doing a good job here of uh, staying on task. Yeah, that hurt a lot on last night's race for me. And it is curious because it's not something I will do, but when you're playing, I don't know, your switches in your brain change suddenly. <laughs> yeah, as a lot of Zelda 2 randomizer fans might know, I personally prefer the 6 gem standard because I tend to be a little more thorough than you should be in a Max Rando. Max Rando tends to reward um, a little bit of a faster paced play, um, a little bit more direct play. Uh, I, I favor a more thorough approach that is rewarded in standard. So yeah, the Alan Hefley is now in Guma's chambers and well, things are not looking good for him, but We'll see him try to glitch the guy. At attack 5, he's got a fair shot. 
that was a very short Palace Five, was it not? Like a blink and you miss it. Yep. And so that bodes well for him. Like, for example, if if I'm one of the runners in a five gem seed, Palace Five is likely to be the one that I skip. And if I were to make that decision in a race here against Hefley, I would be in trouble because he was rewarded with a, a very short Palace Five. I, I can't say one room because, like you said, I was paying attention to two streams and blink and you miss it. But this appears to be a what? I, a, how many rooms? Can can anyone in chat tell me one, two, or three room Palace Five? Yeah, it was pretty short, and he was doing a pretty good job at Guma, but. Uh, unfortunately one hit ends up all your hopes so let's see if he gets it this time it's looking good so far uh, I see he yeah he's using a conservative uh, slow but steady approach here against Gumo which I personally do favor in low survivability situations if you can't tank several hits from Guma I do like using these whatever cheese corner strats that you're seeing here they're pretty safe. Yeah, however, you have to be very precise for Guma to not get out of there and his ma his mace not to appear. But yeah, he makes it. That was a flawless victory for the Alan Hefley on round two. And he's about to place his fourth gem. Yeah, that was good job clutch play and he has placed four gems here very quickly. Raikou still sitting on the one gem. I'm surprised that Raikou hasn't. Um, I believe he right did Helmet Head. But I didn't see him beat he uh, Helmet Head, but I guess the Alan Hefley caught our attentions with his Guma fight. Okay, uh, uh, my, mis uh, my mistake. It sounds like um, Raikou does have the gem in Palace too. So now Hefley will press forward looking for any which palace he can find. I don't believe they have the reflect spell, so really it's it's going to have to be Palace 6 un unless he stumbles upon a town that will grant him reflect. And for our viewers' delight, we have the candle in the water tile. You're going to be able to see what's inside of caves. However, this doesn't look like a seed that, that will require caves too much. Yeah, I was just thinking to myself, if he even finds himself in any more caves, that that's not great. <laughs> I realize a yeah, pass-through caves might be required, but that, that would be unfortunate. Hopefully, you can um, just sort of hike to whatever remaining palaces you need to find in a perfect world. So Chad is telling us that Reflect is in Old Kasuto, so the Alan Hefley is about to get it. And I guess Raikou Rider already got it. Perfect, that's actually a relief in a seed like this. You like to see Reflect because uh, 4 is often a little more pleasant than Palace 6, so if given the option, if all, in, in all things equal measure, I'd rather do Palace 4. Yeah, with two heart containers and no shield, no life, I will prefer Palace 6 to Palace 5, but yeah, the, the Alan Hefley did the gutsy thing and it got rewarded because it was a very short Palace 5. Let's see what Raikou Rider does when he enters Palace 5. Yeah, and that's a good point, too, about the shield and life spell. E even though you may be in go mode and have what you need to uh, finish the game, any town I come across that can give me a spell, I'm going to take it, hoping for life or shield, because you never know just how long or nasty GP is going to be. Uh, when you're sitting on only two or three heart containers, um, that can be problematic to get through GP. Even if uh, you're good enough in combat to survive, 
having the shield spell will help you move faster. You can just tank more things and not have to be quite so meticulous and strategic on your way through. So we see Raikou Rider entering Palace 3. And the Alan Heffley getting the candle out of the water tile. Yeah, the water tile is a nice, easy location to grab an item. Even if I, like last night, I was in a race where I was turning down item caves, I turned down Nuka Sudo, but when I found that water tile, I took the item. And Chad is telling us that Nuka Sudo is hammer blocked. So at this point, the only thing that can scare our runners is uh, three eye rock. However, have we seen the, the, the two palaces in the open? I'm not uh, sure. No, and I don't recall seeing Maze Island either. Did, did you check where Palace 5 was? Was it in Valley of Death? It was. No, I, I believe that was one of the out in the open ones. Is that also where 3 was? Yeah, 3 was in the open. So if both are in the open, there is no flute scare at this point. That's correct, yeah. If, if I'm correct about P5, which I believe that was one of the out in the open ones. We see Hefley making his way down the coast. I assume he's looking for Maze Island. Unless the River Devil <laughs> is blocking Maze Island, which is oh, that would be so harsh. very rarely, but we can see that. <laughs> that would be one to remember, huh? If the flute was required because you needed to just get through the River Devil, aka the ex-wife. <laughs> okay, so we see Raikou Rider making his River Neck fight. He's going to use the corner strats, the jackhammer. He fails it, but he's going to man mode him. With attack 6 is not a heavy task. So he gets it, and... The Alan Hefley in Naburu getting his spell. And it is the real jump spell, which sucks. Yeah, that is a whammy to say. Oh, did Riker Ryder jump the seat? He just jumped the gem. So yeah, twice in a row we see that we, move. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, oh man, he, he's been studying the Bent Class 2 book of Z2R. He just jumped the gem. This is all the rage now, people. Okay, so we see the Alan Hefley going up north through a road that doesn't seem to have the River Devil in it. He's hoping he finds Maze Island out there. And the River Devil is in a corner. He was admonished and he's reflecting for his actions there. And there's Maze Island. Yeah, ch chat asking about the overflow in experience. Um, <laughs> yeah, that. There are still some people who prefer the overflow leveling strats where you try to get yourself to attack eight and then pump up the rest of your levels with like one final gem or whatever. Um, that's hard enough and risky enough to do in rando to begin with, let alone a max rando where you're working with less gems. Um, I agree, that that is not the way I would go. Uh, I say once you've hit a certain minimum threshold, like 334 for example, you should probably be taking every level that comes to you. It, it's just safer and will make the middle of the game easier. Yeah, I've seen quite some people do that on the Max Rando tournament. And yeah, I find that could be good if you are very skillful and... 
and you have a short seed that for a five gem seed i wouldn't go that way well yeah it's good to have high attack levels that makes you feel good but um on the other hand that means you have to leave your magic and life levels low uh in the mid in the early and middle portion of the game and i just find that as long as you take those levels and, and you bolster your magic and life levels in the middle of the game you're actually speeding yourself along compared to whatever additional speed attack seven would give you as compared to attack six yeah, and the Alan Heffley in Palace 6, because that's the one he found in Maze Island, he doesn't want to go looking for the, the Valley of Dead at this moment, so we're still missing one palace in the west, which could be Great Palace, and we're missing uh, uh, the Valley of Dead. So we'll see which one is which. Uh, Alan Hefley deciding to engage the item Rebo here in P6. Uh, this is not a play I would probably make to, to invest this much time into grabbing an item. Um, but it's it's not that terrible, if, especially if he gets another heart container. And well, that didn't work out. Yeah, maybe he was looking for a way to game over, other than pressing up and A on the second controller. <laughs> yeah, always looking for a slower way to game over. <laughs> yeah, we got a master class last night about that with Venglas 2 yeah. on the Guma fight. <laughs> oh, what a time to be alive, huh? We see two, two gem jumps in the same round of a tournament. Yeah. I, I I dare to say in the same day because that that moment was after midnight. So the same day we got two jumps. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It it, it will go down as the same day, and um, boy, I just don't know what to make of that. I'm glad Buzz Thunder in chat keeping score. Uh, Guma is prolific. Man, the karma is gonna bite us hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beware Boss Thunder, Rose City Sane, and Victor Santa Fe. You're gonna get punished in the next weeks. <laughs> you, you never know. Every time you fire up a Max Rando, you're agreeing to get punished. Definitely. So, Raikou Rider and the Alan Hefley getting the. Uh, sorry, only Raikou Rider getting, getting the items out of Maze Island, and there's the hammer. There's a very tiny possibility that Great Palace is hammer blocked in the West. I've never seen that, but who knows? No, I suppose that's possible. I, I can't recall ever seeing something like that, but uh, certainly feasible. I, I fear for Raikou Rider that that hammer is going to slow him down. Uh, I, I don't know his style of play well enough personally, but it's possible that he uh, will go back to where he knows New Kasudo to be uh, in, in the hopes of a couple more items and perhaps a spell. Very possible. I, I, I'm pr oh, the, He already has the spell. They started with that fairy spell, I think. The uh, And that's in the seventh slot, which is the New Kasudo spell slot. Uh, but he may still want more items. Yeah, going into New Kasuto feels like a five minutes, five minutes time loss. I guess it's way lower than that, maybe probably like three minutes. But yeah, it feels very slow once you're in. Yeah, you know, New Kasuto is a wonderful thing to find if you still need stuff to be in go mode, but once you have it, it, it's a time sink. So this Palace 6 is proving to be quite challenging. Alan Hefley has been here for quite a while. I hope he doesn't get possessed by Victor Santa Fe this time. 
and he's in the Canadian hole, which he fell into, and he falls again. I think that was an intentional jump into the Canadian hole, but I, I can't be sure. No, he fell a while ago. So he's, this oh, is okay. round three for him. Yes, even paying divided attention, I, I recognize the loop. And he dies. <laughs> so round four. <laughs> yeah, the sniped by the mower. And we see Riker Rider in the item room. Let's find out what the Alan Heffley missed. He will avenge Alan Heffley, taking on item Rebo. Ooh, and the Alan Heffley just saves himself in the BGT room. Yeah, taking the fairy walk of shame. And he game overs. Ooh, and that was a heart container in P6 here. So that gives Raikou twice as much life as Hefley. And he's going to have at least one more attack level. So that's interesting. Yeah, as always, Great Palace is going to be the great equalizer. Man. Survivability in Great Palace is very important, especially if you have long roads. In, in long forced roads, roads you have to survive before you, your three lives are gone. So yeah, let's hope it's not that bad for for the Alan Heffley, the Great Palace. But anything can happen at this point. He's going for the Valley of the Palace. We'll see if that yeah. is Palace Four yeah. or GP. That is a good play. Uh, I don't blame him one bit for wanting to check it out. Um, we have we have a new viewer in uh, chat. Please say hello to Trail Z420. Uh, Trail Z, if you're new to the Zelda 2 randomizer, this is a fun game. You should download it and play sometime. Yeah, especially the max random category. Yeah. So we see now Riker Rider tackling this terrible Canadian hole room. Palace 6 has got to be pretty confusing in this seed because both runners are going in circles to some degree. And I, I, and, and Alan Heffley, in fact, noped out. Yeah, thankfully he found Palace 4 on Valley of Death. However, there's this uneasiness he must be feeling because he hasn't seen Great Palace on the West. Okay, and a magic container for Hefley, which, uh, it, you know, he probably at this point would like another heart container, but getting another magic container is about as good as it gets. And we get a game over from Raikou Rider, but he's deciding to keep in Palace 6. Palace 6 claiming another victim. It has proven to be a uh, stumbling block here in this seed. One of the big differences in the seed right now um, is just simply uh, the Alan Heffley's decision to jump into five, which proved to be very short and a uh, free Guma as long as you don't mind having to go flawless victory style. Yeah, that was pretty fortunate for him. At this moment, Definitely, Rider Rider yeah. is kind of forced to do this Palace 6. And I don't know if he hasn't, if he has seen Palace 5. I, I don't know if he found it and got out of there, or, or if he hasn't stumbled upon it. Not to the best of my knowledge, yeah, he hasn't um, seen 5. And if he did, he didn't attempt it at all. Okay, so 
chat informing us that he saw it and immediately noped out. So, th yeah, that would be this the next best thing. Yeah, as, as I told you before, I will have done that too. And I will have been punished. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I probably would have done the same thing. Um, maybe you do it considering that I don't think either runner has seen the third palace on the West. Uh, and so that would at least be wearing on my mind at this point. I th have we confirmed that that's GP now, right? That Yeah, GP should be in the West at this point. Yeah, we, by process of elimination, we know GP to be in the West. Oh, oh, but it's in a location that remains a mystery. And like Victor's pointed out, imagine a scenario where it's hammer blocked, where the only way through is through a narrow path blocked by a boulder. Okay, and we have Carrick. So, if uh, Hefley... Oh, <laughs> I spoke too soon. He, he does have one more life, though, so... Hopefully, for him, he survives, and this would be his final gem. But yeah, for the Alan Hefley not having shield, nor life, and two hard containers is a great disadvantage. You're holding your breath. <laughs> and simultaneously, we have Raikou Rider facing Barba. All right, and Alan can hexail. He defeated Carrick. This, assuming he doesn't jump the gem here, will be his fifth gem. <laughs> and he decides to play old school and actually place the gem. Okay, so hopefully we'll see GP soon. Or a surprise, we don't know. Well, we're, yeah, we're about to find out just how difficult this GP is to access. I'm looking forward to this myself. Meanwhile, Raikou putting the finishing touches on Barba. Maybe he has already found it, but as you enter GP and leave immediately, we didn't check it out. And I guess that's the palace he's about to enter. Yeah, so I guess he already found it. That must have happened very quick if we both missed it. Yeah. Yeah. So, entering GP uh, at 50, sec 50 minutes and 50 seconds. Yeah, and he will have a full palace lead on Raikou Rider, who still has to place one more gem. Um, the big question now for Hefley is going to be just how nasty is the survivability here in GP. He's working with the vanilla number of lives, three, uh, only two heart containers, and no shield, no life spell. So, you just never know. This GP could be just a couple of rooms long and straight into Dark Link, not even worry about T-Bird, or it could be long and nasty, go through, uh, you know, 25 plus rooms and then find a required T-Bird. You just don't know. So, buckle up. Yeah, the uneasiness is heavy at this point. Yes, this is where, as a runner uh, completing a low survivability max rando seed, you're experiencing trepidation. You're worried that even if you have the lead, your low survivability is going to cost you, and that the other guy might have gathered a couple of more heart containers somewhere else and could catch you even from behind because of the survivability situation. switch the music because people like the Great Palace theme. 
Oh yeah, that is definitely a tune I, I can jam out to for sure. And for Raikou, I think his next play is going to be to go back into Palace Five. At least for his sake, I hope it is, knowing how short Palace Five is. We'll have to see exactly what he decides to do. So Raikou Rider getting the spell spell, which is not that useful at this point. And the Alan Heffley crossing the Trail Z room and going into Thunderbird. And he'll face Thunderbird. Will he fight? And it looks like he will choose to fight rather than turn around. With the standard meta of go right, uh, I would say this is statistically the correct play. He's going, he has attack six, so that's good news, is that he's not going to have to deliver an insane amount of hits to T-Bird. The bad news is, is that um, T-Bird will one-shot him just like uh, Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson's punch out. One shot. Yeah, it is pretty hard, especially when you're feeling uneasy. Those fights tend to go badly. Now, if he if he were to game over here, uh, the question would, would would he make a beeline right back for T-Bird or would he choose to explore another path? That's another great mystery of the Max Rando seed, you know? And when you're playing standard, you know you have to fight T-Bird. Um, and Max Rando, maybe you're tempted to try another way. And Riker Ryder is doing the new Kasuto walk. Yeah, I remember I mentioned earlier that I was afraid he would fall into the new Kasuto um, time sink. But I guess at this point it is guaranteed that he's going to get a survivability spell. No, he already has the spell out of new Kasuto. The new Kasuto spell was fairy. It, they started with it. All right, you're absolutely right. So, so yeah, I, spell I, tower. what he's hoping for is more heart containers, I suppose. And Alan, very nice job dispatching T-Bird. Flawless victory. Yeah. He's delivering today. He, he, he got Guma on round two on Flawless victory. And now yep. Thunderbird. Oh, T-Bird, you sack of dung. Uh, <laughs> you're guarding a dead end. <sighs> Thanks a lot. Um, so now back to the drawing board for Alan Hefley. Um, but yeah, he, he has played this seed. Well, you have to be impressed with how, uh, Hefley has approached this seed and his execution has been, uh, spot on. So he game over and we'll see what he does now because he can go to the trails yeah. room to the left or he can go to the left here, which is that, what that... trail Z will, will do if he games <laughs> over. Yeah, that game over didn't hurt him one bit. It, in fact, it, it's probably a benefit that he took a game over so quickly there because now he can explore this other angle. He can attack this uh, immediate left and he'll get all his magic and lives replenished. So uh, I actually think that was a big uh, silver lining there. I don't think the the trails room uh, is is accepted by the community, but I keep pushing it. No, I, I, love to call that I think room that's that okay. Way. When you say the trails room, I know what room you're talking about. For anyone in chat wondering about that, the trails room is the drop destination room in GP, where you can just walk straight left or straight right to exit the room, and the room is filled with bullets in both directions, horizontal and vertical. That's the trails room. It's it's so called because he's notorious for going directly left there and um, and winning, winning races. races from behind. Yeah. yeah, winning races from behind. Yes.
So we see Riker Rider in Palace 5 pondering and he goes for it. So he's gonna be rewarded mm. by a close Guma, hopefully. We'll see how short this Palace 5 is. Yes, and let's yeah. see. <laughs> First room to the right. Okay, yeah, because I <laughs> I know I'm playing split attention to both seats here, but um uh, I really f felt like I missed the entire Palace 5. I blinked and I saw Hefley fighting Guma, so I, I, I had a feeling it was a one-room P5. More dead ends here for Hefley at the end of the Eon room, so now he'll take the Eon drop and hope for some place where he can go right. And guess what? <laughs> he walks back, he doesn't take the jam. He is overpowering. Oh, Meanwhile, the Alan Hefley finds Dark Zelda. Ah, uh, there you have it. The Eon Drop wins the day. So, in a matter of moments here, uh, assuming there is no game over, Raikou will get the bad news just after placing his final gem. But at least he'll have attack nine. So yeah, the Alan Hefley has finished in first play with a time of 59 minutes and 25 seconds. Yeah, GG to him. Uh, he sub houred a five gem seed. Uh, that has to feel good. Uh, well played all in all. He did a good job of ignoring the thing that you could ignore. And, and that is a big factor in winning a Max Rando. Yeah, definitely. It almost always rewards you when you don't go out of your way. Okay, so the Alan Hefley is telling us that he needs to catch his breath. And yeah, that being in Great Palace with two hard containers, no shield, no life is definitely a nerve rocking experience. Going through Thunderbird, it is just amazing for him that he delivered on those very tight situations. He must be feeling very proud about it. Yeah, as, as well he should, yep. Raikou is now back on the Western continent and looks to be making his way toward GP, which we know to just be lying out in the open now. And he's taking a brief break here at the entrance to GP. Then we'll dive in. Well, that was a thing. Hey, man, GG. Thank you. Thank you. Man. Yeah, congratulations. That was amazing. You pulled off several very, very tight things. The Guma fight, the Thunderbird fight, entering GP without life or shield spell and two, ma two hard containers. It was amazing, man. GG. I was I was pretty worried not having any of the safeties and only two hard containers, but uh, I just I knew I just had to go. There's I had the items I needed, and really I just needed maybe spells. But yeah, the safety spells were probably locked behind uh, trophy and medicine. I'll bet. You very nearly picked up a third heart container in Palace Six. That item Rebo was guarding a heart container. For whatever oh, that's worth, yeah. Uh, Raikou Rider is in GP right now with a total of four heart containers, so there were at least one more to to grab for for anyone who wanted it. But uh, very nicely handled uh, with the low survivability, no margin for error, T-Bird in particular, and Guma. Um, it was impressive the way you uh, streamlined the seed and 
uh, I thought did a very good job of ignoring everything that could be ignored and just and focusing on the task at hand. That's exactly how to win a max rando. Yeah, that's usually not how I usually play this, so I, I knew I needed to change up what I, you know, normally do as far as strategy goes. Um, but yeah, it's like, yeah, like I said, I had all the items, I had the spells I, you know, could possibly need, so it's like, just gem and go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know me, I also tend to be a little too thorough, and that's what, you know, it's been an adjustment playing Max Rando to uh, to taking a more aggressive approach early in a game. Uh, but that's exactly what you did here. You must have been happy to see the glove so early and, and know that you could just go about your business and you, you didn't have to unnecessarily comb the whole overworld. Yeah, that's that's exactly. Whenever I uh, I made the decision, to just go. As I got the gloves, like, okay, yep, I'm, I'm good. Vic Victor and I were speculating a little bit about the necessity for flute uh, being, po you know, possibly being necessary. Uh, wondering if GP might be uh, flute blocked, or if there might be a scenario where a palace other than four was flute blocked, and you had to go on a wild search for reflect. Or flute, but it turns out that neither was a factor. Uh, Reflect was pretty free, and there were no flute block palaces, so that worked out good for both runners as well. Uh, it was a pretty free and easy seed, honestly, except for the the, two, the whole two heart container thing. That's about it. Yeah, it could have been a horse of a different color, right? If you had had two lives instead of three, the, uh, that I, that would make the situation even more dicey, especially early. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that extra life does does matter. And for anyone watching now, we see Raikou Rider in the uh, trails room. For anyone confused about what the trails room is, um, <laughs> my, my stream might be a header behind yours by a few, but um, it was the uh, drop destination room with all the bullets. Oh, Trails has his own room now? I don't I don't even have my own room. What the heck? Uh, you can have one for a generous enough donation to the Rose City Fund. <laughs> we'll pu pull the necessary strings. We'll, we'll negotiate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, <laughs> we named that room in him out of annoyance of him sniping racists from us, <laughs> winning from behind by going left in that room instead of even checking right. Well, see, you, usually we name rooms after people when they die in them over and over again, like the BGT room or the, <clears throat> I think the Dark Magician room. Uh, I think he named that one after himself, I think. I think he did. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think any regular runner of this game sort of deserves a room. I, I, and it, to me, it's a crying shame. I don't think we have a Victor Santa Fe room, but we, we badly need one. Uh, he restreamer, commentator, tracker, runner. Um, Victor does it all for us, so... Uh, Someday we'll, if you're... we'll have a memorable yeah. race where something <laughs> happens somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, I need to play yeah, more to get my room. <laughs> that's I true. Yeah, you, you, you had, there is no one room that says Victor to me, uh, so it hasn't like you know materialized organically yet, but maybe you out there in chat can help us is there a room that just gives you those Victor Santa Fe feels on the inside? Uh, if there is, please let us know. So yeah, I'm pushing the, the Trails room because he won several races last year in Max ran the tournament by going left without checking the right direction on that room and, and he was behind, he entered Great Palace later than his opponent, and he won those races. So, it, yeah, I'm I'm pushing that name because of that. That's like it, the the Eon Drop, for example. It's famous yeah. because Eon and let me, won. It is a great honor for me to be so closely associated with one of the most meaningless, frustrating, awful rooms <laughs> in the whole game, and that's the dead end boss room in P2. Um, the fake boss room. 
yeah, yeah. The where you all your you look up to see those curtains, and as soon as you see those stupid blocks floating in the middle of the stupid air, you know that you got to turn around and you curse out Palace too. And if you know me, you probably curse me out as well. Yeah, we love oh, your do. reaction. <laughs> <laughs> that room. <laughs> yeah, if you if you watch my facial expressions on my stream when you see that you 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 know that you're having a moment, yeah. No. You you know what I said whenever whenever I saw that room, I said run validated. Absolutely. <laughs> it it's hard to have a seed without that room. Even in Max Rando, even when all the gems aren't necessary. You know, uh I think every race I've been a part of in recent times has has included that room. I mean, good good luck doing Palace 2 without that room. That's all I'm saying. Good luck. So, the Alan Heffley, when are we going to get the, the Round 3 reveal? Is it coming up next? Uh, depends on when, uh, Raiko finishes. Um, I have a Z1R race at 11, and, oh. um, if he finishes soon, then I can get it, I can knock it out. But, uh, I'd, I'd rather, uh, wait for him to finish. I don't want to seem, I don't want to be rude. I believe he'll uh, make it. But if not... <laughs> but not, yeah, I'll try to do it after I'm done with Z1R. Uh, we we have trails trying to scare up a ra uh, after this one in chat, and uh, I really, I, I'm I'm on the fence about that one. I I could see doing a race right now, but I I could also see chilling for the rest of the night too. I mean, I could go either way on that. That's you'll have to give me a few minutes to decide. The good thing about Max Rando is that it could be short, <laughs> a short race. <laughs> It's good or yeah, good or bad, depending on who you are. I mean, you know, what, I I've won a ten minute race before. I've lost a ten minute race before. It feels funny, you know. I I, I compare Max Rando to like a batting practice, uh, you know, as compared to like a standard seed would be like a, an actual baseball. Game. That's not always the case. Like, a seed like this that we had was a little more complete, even though it started with a lot of the essential stuff. Um, but if when you get those seeds that are like one gem or zero gem, it, it, ju it just feels so strange to me. So, the Alan Heffley, can you tell us about the routing Great Palace? I'm a bit confused about the, the right way to go to Dark Link. You mean the the routing for this seed? Or, yeah, or this seed. In... Oh, this seed uh, is pretty much just a go left thing. Um, I just went, I went meta and just kept going right, and of course that led me to pretty T bird and that uh that dead end. Uh, it's like does, okay. Does the right path include the bottom of the L seven into the top of the L seven. I didn't even see L seven. Okay, because that's what Raker Rider just did. He just took the bottom of the L seven and it, it dropped him into the top of the L seven, and now he's proceeding left. So um, he might be on the wrong path here. I'll, I'll be right back. Yeah, he looped to the start of the of Great Palace. This is okay. kind of similar to what happened to me last night on Palace 6, which is a palace that has a short loop that makes you very confused, and rooms that look exactly the same next to each other. So yeah, Raikou Rider is now at the Eon Drop, so he is in, on the right track, he has two lives. Oh, oh good, good. 
Yeah, even if he takes a bop and puts himself onto his last life here, uh, I think Dark Link will be in the next room following his drop, so he should be in very good shape here. Uh, we see he has his pause, but if he proceeds, he'll, he'll win. Yeah, let's hope he survives this room. Oh. Yeah, I know, and he's going to naturally check the room all the way to the right first, which makes perfect sense. I just hope he, for his sake, he stays ferried up, and, uh... Okay, yeah, now he's lost out his half of his life. I hope now he goes straight into fairy mode. He is not. Ooh, that was so lucky he didn't get knocked in. Yeah, so this will be a pretty close fight for him but well at least he knows the way and it is a pretty short palace so if he game overs he can go at it again and it will take like two or three minutes so it's not that bad and we have dark samus uh, which is already a thing in gaming. And Except... yeah, thankfully <laughs> yeah. he survives with one heart container, which Dark Samus can be very unforgiving. Yeah, especially if you don't have the phase on beam. And get out your GGs in chat for Raikou Rider. Yeah, he finished in second place with a time of 1 hour, 14 minutes, and 12 seconds. Yep, that was a good seed for both runners. Um, a seed that had uh, just just the right amount of challenge if you ask me where it started you with plenty of good items and spells but left you with poor survivability and the overworld was relatively open so with plenty of good items and this spells, seed but really just boiled down to find a palace do a palace there was not a lot else at play the overworld So yeah, we're we're waiting for Raikou Rider to join us in a few. And let's see if he gets. He's here. Okay, GG man. How mm, did you feel about it? I don't it? know. I don't know if you could call it that. Um, this is just this just came down to my unwillingness to do GP at like six three three. That's all it came down to. Yeah. You certainly got yourself to attack 8 in a hurry. We were even wondering about attack 9, but uh, <laughs> nice job dodging that. that was, I, knew when I, I knew when I started seeing, when I saw the starting life total, that I needed to just get enough survivability to get through GP, because I shared this, I, I know I've shared this with a lot of people, but I don't like mix at all. Mix, mix what? Um enemies oh, okay the mix large and small enemies yeah i don't like that at all okay it tends to make gp just awful oh yeah when you have waffle rooms loaded with bird knights and whatnot yeah and especially the uh theater rooms the rooms with the curtains uh large open rooms with the curtains they uh, those rooms uh almost always punish you if you attempt to walk through uh, ferrying through seems to be the uh, you know the strat of the day for that. I ferried through a ton of rooms in general in the seed, especially the caves early on. Some of those item caves were just miserable, and I want to say, I want to say, uh, four max heart containers was not very friendly either. Yeah, uh, I, I we can't say for sure that that was the max, but you you certainly had the most between you and Hefley Hefley. Uh, finished with just the two he was granted at the beginning um that's what i think that's what i figured game over he took a game over 
to the item Rebo in Palace 6. Otherwise, he would have had a third. But, uh, yeah, at 4, you can start to relax a little, especially if you have attack 8. But um, I believe you did not have the shield or life spell. Is that correct? I did not. The shield and life spell? Okay, so... You might have been wondering after I placed my after I placed my fourth gem, the reason why I wasn't just going into five. If the reason why is because I was looking for a way into VOD to see if I could figure out where GP was, and I was also trying to locate Naburu to see if it had the shield or life spell. In which case, I wouldn't care which palace I went into. But of course, I never found either one of those spells, and that impacted my decision my decision making late in the seed as lacking those spells. Because yeah. given the amount of health and given the amount of health in the seat, I didn't really feel comfortable going into GP, especially that particular GP. Because man, did that give me the run around. Yeah, that's very understandable to continue to look for a survivability spell. I've been known to do the same thing. Uh, even if you're capable of finishing GP without shield or life, having one of them will help you move faster. You can tank hits and and not have to move so methodically. So that is a good play. Um, and no one can blame you for not jumping right into five. Normally, that would be about the last thing I wanted to do. It just so happened in this seed, it would, Palace Five was exactly one room long. So the reason the reason why I the reason why I avoided Palace Five was again I was looking for other palaces first, um, and uh, like basically when when I was going around the palace five area before i went in there i was looking for the entrance to vada and i just couldn't find it and then i decided you know what i'm just gonna go do palace five because this is probably going to be faster than searching for a palace that may or may not be palace four it might just be gp and i have to find pal and i have to go finish palace five anyway and you might have noticed a very long pause when i entered gp yes i did i missed that in my initial exploration of the western continent and i just felt awful when i thought it i yeah i was going to ask you about that too because the first time through even though gp seemed to be in plain sight uh victor and i didn't notice you or alan uh stumble across gp i think as it turns out alan might have known where it was but he noped out of it so quickly that you know we, we didn't notice and we were we spent a lot of the seed wondering where GP was and so I'm glad you just sort of answered our question for us you confirmed for us that you in fact didn't see it the first time around yeah GP was the first thing I found <laughs> oh yeah oh, oh for, for Alan yeah that's for me oh, okay okay yes so that that explains it um uh, with my attention divided between both streams um I didn't notice Alan finding it, so uh, we were speculating all kinds of things. We were speculating that maybe GP was going to be hammer block somehow, and with only uh, Reikau having the uh, the hammer, that, that that might tip the game in favor of him. Uh, I think that just turns out to be some, you know, wishful thinking from a from an interesting seed viewer standpoint, but. Uh, yeah, that that GP was hiding in plain sight. Well, uh, if it was hiding in plain sight, then I rolled a one. <laughs> I, I see. Uh, well, it's still hard to feel badly. I mean, you played well. Um, your your decision making was good. Um, uh, Alan just did a very good job in this seed of just basically going straight from palace to palace and there was um just very little wasted time on his part um uh, had a very streamlined plan of attack i would say i think the only play that maybe was wrong was i think palace three i went back and finished that attack level i think there are plenty of people that would consider that wrong also, you you jumped the gem at one point, didn't you? In Palace, I did. Too? Oh, yes. I'm glad you brought up the experience because we had a situation last night where I mean, everyone just came unglued when BGT jumped the gem. It was going to be his first gem of four at the hour 22 mark, and he jumped the gem. And no one could believe what they were witnessing. Um, I think yours was a little less jaw dropping. It was a shorter palace. Uh, you were closer to your level. Uh, 
but but still, yeah, the to, to witness two gem jumps in a 24 hour span was just, you know, just awesome. Well, not only just a not only just a gem jump, but I also went back to I think I think it was after Palace Three or one of the other palaces. I killed the boss and went back for experience. Yeah, that's. Um, I mean, that, that one is- wasn't. That one was understandable because there was literally one screen to the one screen away from the boss. There was a blue dark nut that gave me the rest of the experience I needed. Yeah, I think that was a one screen trek. I, I think I remember what you're talking about. And that, yeah, that's a play I think most people make. Uh, the gem jumping is a bold statement, though. That's that is someone who is bound and determined to um, overflow their experience and level in a way that is more common in vanilla um but in a seed like this with the low survivability that attack eight might win the day and help you kill t-bird and and so it is understandable just it, it's something that we don't see very often speaking of t-bird i was really happy with the t-bird fight this time around uh, yeah, you, did you manage to get him on the first try? I, I don't recall. I did. I did, but yeah. um, I was afraid. I I wasn't sure if he was going to one-shot me or not. Because it, I had... Uh, it was well, close. I were think you like six or life seven? seven okay. Uh, I don't think he would have one-shotted you at life seven with four containers. Uh, he was one-shot deadly to Alan Heffler. I think he, I think he did like 60 damage to me. Yeah, pretty sure you would have survived one hit, but like, it, if you get hit even once against T Bird, it, it, at least for me, almost always leads directly to a second hit mm-hmm. because it throws off your whole timing and your whole rhythm. T Bird is a rhythm fight, and one hit might as well be like three or four hits, uh, it, at, at least to me. Exactly, like jump spell or not, because I am that one weirdo in this tournament that actually mm-hmm. prefers jump for Thunderbird. Yeah, that's that's not so unusual. What what I find to be rare and unusual is when people just go with the center strat. You just stand straight in the middle and just jump up and make some nice panic dolphin strats or what have you. Uh, that that to me, it, it just I find it unsettling. That sounds like a Uno strat. Yeah, maybe. I, I, I've seen him use multiple different strategies. Uh, I think I'm thinking of Al Soa is the one that insists on standing in the middle and not moving uh don't recall but yeah jump uh yeah some people you, you i can take or leave jump with t-bird I, I usually prefer to fight him without jump most people do it's and jump is not about making the fight easier it's about making the fight faster that's right and, and especially if you're dealing with low survivability jump is a little bit of a suicidal strat there um uh jump is I think it's going to be more helpful for people if you have a very high attack level and very high survivability. Then you can make it go nice and fast. And does attack eight life seven count? Yeah, I, I, I think I think we could classify that. With Given the four heart containers, you only can survive the one hit. So maybe, I don't know, we'd have to take a vote by a show of hands. But uh, yeah, I see what you're getting at. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, the morph ball was not easy to locate. I was looking for the morph ball before I went east, and it was just the last, the second to last thing I found in west. Yeah, I, again, I I consider that to be understandable. I consider downstab to be a, a defensive thing more than anything else. Uh, it, it lets you pogo over enemies, and uh, it it definitely enhances survivability. So, I do not like going east without it. I just do not li- I just do not like going east without it, especially in these kind of situations where maybe if we had four or five lives I would consider it, but with three lives and two hearts, too much. Cuz there's way too many things that can just one shot you. Because of my leveling my leveling strategy, I never go higher than life 4 until I'm ready to go into GP. Yeah, that's that's a strategy as long as you're comfortable playing conservatively in the middle of the game to go with those overflow strats and to keep the level, the magic level at three and the life level at four. Uh, 
I, I find that if you take the magic levels and the life levels as they come to you early, you can speed along the middle of your game. That's exactly uh, what I like to do. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're, you're leveling. At least uh, it helped you through GP. Uh, like you said, you had a good T-Bird fight. Uh, you didn't seem to struggle too badly, despite only the four containers and no survivability spells. Um, I, I guess it just took just a little too long in this seed to pull off a win, but uh, still some good stuff here from you. Oh, well, well, thank you. I wasn't yeah. going to beat somebody <laughs> like Alan. He's he's like a front runner to take it all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. I don't really? like to take more risks. Uh, because you have nothing lo to lose here in Max Rando. Making a bad decision isn't the end of the world because Max Rando is just that wacky. A little bit. A little bit. I, I know exactly how it is because I was... In, you might remember a long time ago, the Zelda 1 randomizer, we had the random percent tournament. That was wacky. So I know all about wacky flag sets. Yeah, I, I usually prefer to stay on the tried and true, but this has been fun so far. For the last month, I've really immersed myself in Max Rando, and I, I'm only just now starting to come to an understanding with it. I'm the opposite. I very much prefer I very much prefer your standard six gem, uh, just because just because of the issues that I mentioned with just not having survivability at the end of the game. And this was a five gem seed too. Like you put me, you give me like a one or or heaven forbid zero gem seed. I don't know if I could even beat it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes the cruelest seed will be the zero gem start with the glove seed and uh if you run into that you just you, like gp could be right next to start but it could be the most grueling gp ever and then so what are you to do are you supposed to go explore the world and hope to find a few things and come back with a few levels or do you just force your, you know press yourself through room by room uh hoping to run into dark link you know it, who's say and the and the more freeform leveling strategy that you were talking about lends itself to seeds like that, where you just take what levels you get, and if you can, if you're comfortable beating the game with it, I really think that that's a huge asset in a format like this, as opposed to a six gem format where you can reliably be on like like eight x eight, pretty much every seed. If you want to, yeah. I mean, when I play standard my levels are almost always like either five six seven or like five seven seven or six six seven they're always like one of those three i, I can count on it it's like clockwork <laughs>